India, ancient civilization uniting religion, music and philosophy around sound and vibration. My journey led me to the banks of the Ganges, to a place that embodies this union, Paranasi, also known as Benares. I am among those musicians from around the world who come to this cultural and spiritual capital to discover or learn the secrets of a sacred musical art, a fundamental concept on which Indian music is based, the Raga. With my travel companion Daoud, I put my trust in traditional string instruments to weave my way through the silk roads. One year, on the road, across 12 countries, exploring their traditional music and connecting with their players. Our third country is India. Welcome to the musical threads of the Silk Roads. Upon arriving, my first instinct is to go meet a Garana. The Mishra Garana welcomed me to the home in Benares. Lots of musicians immigrated here because uh, this city was always supporting music and tradition. Banaras actually is a great school also you can say, great place to come and study Indian classical music. My name is Wade Evans, I'm from the USA, from Utah. I have been a musician since I was a child. Uh, in my early 20s I started traveling in various countries around the world. Um, I first came to India 15 years ago. I've been here every year for three, four months a year. I met my, my guru, Pandit Shivnath Mishra. You know, he, he's mostly speaking through his son, Deobrat Mishra, who is also a sitar master. From generation to generation, the Garanas actively contribute to the preservation and evolution of Indian classical music. The origin of uh, Indian classical music is actually coming from Veda's time, which is 4,500 years from now. Indian classical music uh, being uh, very much connected with culture. As we, we have a goddess like Saraswati, it's a symbol that used to play Veena, the instrument, looks like sitar. Other uh, thing is that Ganesha, the Lord Ganesha, he, he was a, also a Prakavaj player, they say. And also Shiva was a, a great dancer, that's why we called him Nataraj. And the meaning of Nataraj is the king of dance. And that shows that how Indian music is, uh, is uh, connected with Indian culture and it's a very old tradition. To me this is very, very beautiful and very humbling to, to be connected to this deep tradition and also very liberating to have the, the freedom to take the accumulation of this knowledge and hopefully soar with it somehow. I feel like I'm just sticking my head out of a muddy puddle at the bottom of the mountain to look up in the mountain and to realize that there's a mountain to begin climbing. But um, I, I am very happy with with where it's going and and for me it's you know it's about the process it's about the effect that the music has on my personality it is uh, as they say marg sangeet it's almost music as a as a path in itself babaji's speech deeply touches me the sitar for him the oud for me we have both dealt into cultures that are not originally ours through our respective instruments. Our shared journey in the so-called oriental, or rather modal musics, has led us to study a fundamental concept with humility and deep admiration. 
what the Arab world calls the Makam, and here, in India, the Raga. The essence of Indian classical music is freedom within discipline. You know, the, the, uh, the boundaries, the parameters are quite defined. The parameters of a raga, for instance, are, are fairly strict. We have to be on the same scale. We don't have to mix up with other scales. So you have a freedom, but at the same time, you have a boundaries also. But within those strict parameters, there is absolute freedom for the artist, for the musician, to express themselves individually. In the development of a raga, there is so much room for, for improvisation, and you're constantly pushing yourself and your own, your own skill, your own knowledge, and your wisdom in how to develop this raga. This music goes with the relaxation. Because it connected with your body, it connected with your chakras. It's very useful for human nature. In the moment, being in the moment, this is, this is one of the beautiful things in this music is every time you are presenting a raga, it's, it's different. And, and depending on your moment, depending on your surroundings, your mood, um, it, it will always come out differently. And uh, this for me is something which helps it to never become old or stale. One of the beautiful things about Hindustani music is this scope for exploration. The boundaries of a raga maybe have never been reached by anybody. There's always more to discover in, in each and every raga. When swimming in the ocean that, it is, that is a raga, so sometimes it's hard to know whether the, the boundaries that you're exploring are something in the future or you're just diving deeper into the past. Uh, oftentimes in a spontaneous composition, one might not know the line between something that you have heard in this raga, something that you have heard before, and something that you are just creating new and fresh. Sometimes this line becomes very blurry. Sometimes it's impossible to know if you're creating something spontaneously. Part of the, the beauty and the challenge of Hindustani music is remaining on one hand open to receive this inspiration while simultaneously remaining presence, the presence of mind to know exactly where you are, for instance, in the rhythmic cycle at all times. Kind of a joining of the left brain and right brain, which is a very, very beautiful thing to to explore this this union within your own personality. This is maybe possibly one way to help discover our true potential as human beings. capable of discovering our true potential as human beings on our own. Where would this light come from? Gu is light and Ru is dark. So a man who brings you from dark to light 
that person is called guru. If you wanted to learn a particular raga, you know, you can, you can find 50 different artists' interpretation of this raga. That in conjunction with several books, which might have a few pages on this raga explaining the ascending and descending scales and the, um, you know, transcribing a few of the identifiable phrases that constitute the raga. One can learn without a guru to some extent. Teacher and, and student relation is like father and son relation. Looking at my own personal experience, in the time that I've been away from my guru, there have been times where I have had a curiosity about a, one particular raga or another, and I have done some sort of independent studies, you know, trying to utilize audio, available audio recordings and existent writings on one raga or another. When you, when you learn like only from book and, and just try to play, this feeling doesn't come. You need to have uh, a great guru who can show you the way that you feel this energy, you feel the, the, the mood of raga. And maybe I can learn the basic outline, but until I've asked my guru about this raga and, and played with him many times, the same raga, I, I never realized exactly just how much I was overlooking and so much of the finer points of the raga that, it, that I was missing out on. In order to transmit this music, uh, a knowledgeable guru is, is very important. The importance can't be overstated. Banaras Pani Piyo Chanke and Guru Karo Janke. That means whenever you drink water, you first filter it. And whenever you choose a Guru, you should first check your Guru is okay or not. And when you have good Guru, then you stick with this Guru. But open your ears. You should go, you should listen and take good things from other musicians. But your mentor should be one, so you are more clear about music. So, I think Guru has a very important role in Indian classical music. The Gurus and Garanas have always ensured the continuity of traditions while allowing for innovation and artistic growth. But isn't this model of teaching, with its virtues of persistence and patience, eroding in a modern world led by instant gratification? Having traveled in, in I don't know, 50 or 60 countries in the world, um, one of the really difficult things for me to see is the homogenization of culture and uh, that has come with, with globalization, corporate globalization in particular. Um, and this, is, this has affected all aspects of traditional arts and culture, music especially. But you see it in, in dress and in food and in language even, you know, many languages are disappearing all over the planet, but traditional musics are also suffering. It's very difficult to keep traditional music alive because there just really isn't much money in it compared to many other opportunities that, that people have all over the world. And there's a lot of pressure from parents on their children to take up other occupations that will bring in more money for their families and help them survive in an increasingly competitive world. It's difficult to see how traditional music can thrive into the future. 
it seems that we are entering a period where it'll be more and more difficult to find traditional music and musicians. I think some countries more than others have a very difficult road ahead of them if they want to preserve their, their music. In India, for instance, it's harder and harder to find good instruments. You know, it's harder and harder to find knowledgeable teachers in, in, in the classical world. It's harder and harder to find musicians who have the time to teach. You know, maybe a knowledgeable musician just doesn't have the time or the motivation or the energy to just transmit their knowledge to the next generation. It's very important that we do inspire the next generation to, to take up this art form. And the question of how to, how to inspire the next generation is, is a good question. I think this is something that we have to look at in ourselves. What inspired us to take on this path in the first place? Sometimes we, we get a tenden, have a tendency to become so complicated in our music that uh, it becomes inaccessible and, and therefore lacks the uh, ability to inspire others. But I, sometimes I think if we really can nurture those parts of music that are just accessible in their simplicity, and in their simple beauty, then inevitably we will inspire 